Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by BooksGrowBusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done and published to educate consumers, grow their practices, and to leave a legacy. I'm doing a series of spotlights with remarkable business intermediaries from across the country. And joining me on this segment is Jamie Klingman. She's the founder of the Klingman Group from Tampa, Florida. Jamie, welcome to the program. Mark, thank you so much for having me. Jamie, tell me a little bit about your work and specifically, who are the types of clients that you specialize in working with? Sure. So I became a broker because I sold my own company. I had my own home care company and went through um, the process of being tired of running it and had no idea that, could, that companies could be sold. Um, I'd been so focused on growing at that time. Um, and that was before social media and, and access as much access to information as we have now. Uh, so I went through the process of selling and um, realized that what I really enjoyed was being able to help other owners get the full cycle of their business, the, getting the, the benefits of starting a business, the running the business and everything that comes with that, and then having an asset at the end. Um, I primarily work either in the digital space, so I've done a lot of work with companies that are primarily digital based, as well as uh, services and professional services. So uh, financial services, insurance, lawyers, CPAs, doctor's offices, veterinary offices, couple of restaurants. Um, one of the great things about being a business intermediary is that you get to learn so much about um, so many different businesses. Uh, right now, I have a great soccer company for sale. I'm learning all about football, soccer um, in the U.S. So, um, you know, it's really, but that's been our focus is, is primarily uh, service-based. Really fascinating. Jamie, it, are there any benefits or anything to working with an all digital based business versus a brick and mortar? What, what have you found have been the, the uh, pros and cons? Uh, on the broker side, uh, they're, they're just completely different. Um, they're the, the things that are important in a um, brick and mortar, the, the goodwill that comes from interpersonal relationships isn't so much there on the digital side, but there's goodwill in other ways. It's much more, um, you don't get a chance to apologize um, as much on the um, digital side. Um, if you have a product or a company or, or, or there's not as many opportunities um, to have that interpersonal involvement and, and buy-in. Um, so it's, you know, from a uh, business standpoint, I think it also, you know, there's pros and cons brick and mortar. Um, obviously you get more of those relationships, but you are also sometimes somewhat limited, uh, geographically, uh, digital, you can be anywhere in the world and, and be able to do that. Um, and kind of same thing on the brokering side, when I, um, work with digital companies, they, they don't need to know where in the world I am <laughs> helping them. And on the, um, brick and mortar side, you know, usually there's, there's more of a face-to-face -face involvement. So you went through a sale of a business yourself. So you were a first time seller. And I'd imagine a lot of folks that are selling their businesses is also for them. They also aren't experienced in the process. So when they reach out to you, how prepared are they? Or do they have a ton of questions because they don't even know where to start? What does that sound like? That is the, I think the biggest challenge uh, for business owners and for intermediaries is, is the lack of education that they're, that we're, we, what you hear about is, is growth, 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 growth and not about the, the pieces that you could be doing to ensure that you have an asset available at the end. And so that information around everything from how you're filing your tax returns that you please are filing your tax returns if, if you're in the US, um, that you are keeping your books up to date, that you understand how your books are being managed, you know, cash versus accrual and um, really understanding the ins and outs of your business and, and what that would look like to a buyer coming in um, is some of the big information pieces that uh, those who have businesses, you know, thinking about that two or three years out or even five years out is really helpful because you'll be, when you're ready to sell, you'll be in a much better position and even knowing when the right time to sell is. The inspiration for this series has been the headlines of the great resignation. What's been your experience with that? Is it truly bringing in more buyers interested in buying companies? And what's that been doing uh, motivation for the sellers? What have you seen? I, it's been great. There's, um, you know, I think more than ever, people are realizing that owning a business, you know, those who start businesses aren't necessarily in, have the skill set or ability or and or desire to carry it full to its full potential. So, you know, they carry it as far as they can. And there's certainly through the great resignation, people coming from corporate and, and, and other places that are wanting to take on that entrepreneurial 
spirit and don't necessarily want to start from the ground up and, and have to get through all the growing pains and speed bumps and, and various things. So buying, acquiring is a great way um, to get started. It's also a great way to grow these days. You know, that organic growth that we used to expect you to have to get through um, marketing and those kinds of things, you can now get through acquisition. So we're seeing a lot of that as well. Besides the great resignation, we've got another tidal wave of sellers. There's the, the baby boomer generation that are looking to retire and sell their businesses. For, for those folks that may also, it's their first time selling a business, how far in advance should they start planning the sale? And, and what are the big things they have to really kind of get in order if you can give us a 10,000 foot view on that? Sure. So at a minimum, really two years is is the time frame to ideally be thinking about it. And, and things they want to be thinking about are, one, their tax returns. So uh, most business owners like to, uh, myself included, like to take full advantage of um, opportunities to reduce our tax burden. Um, that is something that you want to be mindful of, because while you can do add backs, and we certainly show seller discretionary earnings and all of those things, um, if you are showing a negative number on your tax return, it's going to be harder to sell your company for as much money as if you weren't showing a negative number. Um, other, you know, the other key point, and this was a lesson I had to learn um, in my own sale, was that um, a lot of times those owners, the company's about them. And so being sure that if the company is, is centered around the owner, taking the time to decenter that, to make sure that the goodwill and the reputation of the company is, is able to stand without the owner still being there going forward, because if they're going to sell, ideally they're not staying on forever. So the, the, that, that's an important piece that I don't think people always take into consideration. Jamie, you mentioned selling your own business and you were, you had a home care business. Tell us a little bit about that. Give me a little bit of background and, and tell me, was that the inspiration for you becoming a business intermediary? How'd you get started? That's exactly what it was. I, um, I, I was a pre-med student who realized I didn't like dead bodies and couldn't go to medical school and <laughs> <laughs> the hard way. And um, I, through our family's friends and, and a financial advisor, um, they suggested I start a home care business. I was in my early 20s. I was always younger than all of my employees and learned every business lesson the hard way. I'd never taken a business class. Um, just learned boots on the ground <laughs> kind of Was that thing. home health care or, or home, home yes. services? Home, healthcare. so providing CNAs and home health aids into people's homes. So gotcha. in different states, that's licensed a little differently, but they're um, the gist of taking care of someone in their home. Um, didn't have any of that background myself. Wasn't, you know, I was pre-med, so I knew the, the science behind it, but not necessarily the, the day in and day out. Um, grew a, a really nice, you know, decent business and um, realized I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, got into my early thirties and, and started to think about, you know, what's the rest of my life going to look like and, um, you know, it was ready to do something else and um, sold. And through that process realized that I, my skill set was in understanding the businesses and, and being able to connect them to somebody, you know, finding the, the points of value and making, helping make that connection. And, you know, that's really what intermediaries do is we're connecting, you know, handing off to the, to the next person. Um, and it's, it's been a, a great opportunity to really see, you know, innovation, um, you know, people are running their businesses in such different ways. Now you don't have to do everything the same way. You know, you don't, necessarily join. Um, I remember one of the first things I did was get a yellow pages ad in early 2000s. And you know, that that's not the first thing you do maybe at all <laughs> anymore. So um, it's a really um, great way to um, be on top of just general practices, but also getting to see kind of what's up and coming. And, and um, I'm so grateful I get to do this. Great experience from both sides of the table, uh, for sure. Jamie, before I ask you my last question, uh, is there anything I didn't think to ask that you feel is important to share in regards to selling a business or even purchasing a business in today's economy? You know, and, and, and I think this is true regardless of the economy, but it, it, even more so today is to, you know, buy the thing that if you're going to buy, buy the thing that you're interested in. There's, um, that's the, that's the entire point is to, you know, if you're, you're getting into something that's going to, nobody's going to tell you to get up in the morning, there's no boss, there's, you know, so if you're buying into that, buy the thing you're interested in and that you want to hold, but at the same time have a plan. And that's true for sellers as well. Um, it takes a lot of stepping back to be able to say, I don't want to take this further. Um, that, that's a, a, a process that's not easy for a lot of people. Most of us are type A and we don't like to be told no. And we you know, think we can do all the things and we can. 
Um, so, you know, selling the best time to sell is when the company's growing. So, you know, being able to kind of identify by the time your sales have, have leveled off and, and God forbid started dropping, um, you've lost so much in what you could, could take out. So if you have that gut, it, you know, if you're hearing this and he, there's a tiny piece of this, that there's a number that would make you move, you should talk to an intermediary. Jamie, for folks listening right now who are considering selling their business and would like to speak with you, how do they find you, connect with you, and learn more? Sure. So um, the easiest way is through our website. It's um, www.theklingmangroup.com, K-L-I-N-G-M-A-N um, group.com. And um, I would welcome any opportunities to you know, share my experience and um, however I can help in the process. This has been terrific. I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing with my audience today. And I wish it continued success for you and for all of your clients. Well, thank you for the honor and um, thank you for the opportunity. And I look forward to seeing your continued success as well. That was Jamie Klingman, founder of the Klingman Group out of Tampa, Florida. And this segment's been brought to you by BooksGrowBusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done and published to educate consumers and prospects grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining me.